So today I'll be talking about sloppy kid syndrome. Um, it was hard to find information on this, but I want to know more about it. So we'll just kind of go through this and hopefully we can learn together. So floppy kid syndrome is a new condition. It affects primarily kids or young goats that are three to 10 days old. Uh, some symptoms are extreme muscular weaknesses and can sometimes result in paralysis. You can also see depression. The goat may, think, may seem lethargic, uh, altered posture. They can be knuckling and come and see laying on their sides. Uh, sometimes goats will lose the inability to use their tongue so they can't suckle properly. Uh, also, possible signs of sepsis, fever infections may tell you that your kid has floppy kid syndrome. So the exact cause of floppy kid syndrome is somewhat unknown still. However, like tests have been done on the three to 10 day old kids and there are some suggestions on things that lead to floppy kid syndrome, such as hypothermia, hypoglycemia, acidosis, sepsis, electrolyte changes. Uh, there's also studies that show that the bacterial agent causing D-lactic acidosis, which is an increase in the plasma concentration of D-lactate, which causes the metabolic acidosis, uh, that's a big cause of sloppy kid syndrome. You'll also see that Sloppy kid syndrome is tied to infections, endotoxemia, white muscle disease, so any of these could be leading to sloppy kid syndrome. Uh, some studies were done to see like how you could prevent uh, the bacterial agent causing D-lactic acidosis from getting to the dams to the kids, so it's suggested that you separate the newborn kids from the adults to prevent the exposure of the kids to the bacterial agent and because it usually originates from the adult goats or their immediate environment. So affected kids are typically born healthy, they're fine, but they'll become weak at three to 10 days of age and they can progress to being recumbent and non-responsive. So warming, uh, nutritional support, and electrolyte changes are the core treatment. So positive response to half a teaspoon of oral sodium bicarbonate is considered a diagnostic for floppy kid syndrome. Uh, electrolyte treatment is critical if diarrhea is involved. You don't want them getting too dehydrated. Uh, if animals show any signs of sepsis, such as fever, uh, infection, in the eyes or the joints or anything, you can use antibiotics. But normally, basically doing intravenous and oral administration of sodium bicarbonate or baking soda and salt will help get your kids back in line. So some people also do Pepto-Bismol, uh, and you can also, if you're going to do the baking soda and salt, you should do a mixture of two teaspoons baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, and a quart of water. And you can do this every four hours, and you're just going to try to feed it to them. Um, it may be hard to feed to them if they can't have any suckling use or anything like that. So sometimes those more severe cases may require like blood chemistry or intravenous fluids. So make sure to have those on your shelf if you have goats. So if no improvement is seen in 12 to 24 hours with your kids, you can contact your vet or if you can even do sooner if the animals are unresponsive and hopefully they can help you get you and your kid feeling healthy again. Uh, the greatest susceptibility for floppy kid syndrome is in the period from March to May in that birthing time between the third and sixth days postpartum. So this is when you're really going to want to be hanging out and making sure, you know, all your kids are good if you're going to let them be damn raised.
thing like I said before this condition is somewhat new still it's still being studied here are some of the references where I found some of the information please comment if you know any more otherwise stay safe out there